And so at root of what is going on right now in American society is that while the government is keeping all of us warring about various topics, whether it's race, whether it's sexuality, whether it's climate change, the reason why they're putting us into all of these boxes is because when you keep people that are imprisoned warring with one another, you never look up and see what is actually enslaving you. <laughs> what is actually enslaving you, what is actually removing power from you. And of course that answer would be the government itself. Which brings me to slavery. I think it's really interesting, and I wrote about this in my book, to realize that slavery ended, of course, in America, but it was actually modernized and updated if you examine what's going on today, right? So things that were crucial to maintaining slaves on a plantation way back when, right? First and foremost, they had to break apart the families because they were constantly auctioning off slaves. If you read Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, in the first chapter, he talks about how he felt nothing when his mother died, how he felt nothing when he was taken away from his sisters. The concept of family was something that they stripped away from slaves entirely, right? You look at another thing in terms of their modernized, updated techniques, and one of the things is that slaves were not allowed to learn how to read. It was a crucial part of maintaining slavery, to maintaining the slave codes. In fact, if you were a white plantation owner and you were caught teaching your slave how to read, you were punished according to slave codes. That's how important that was. And if you want to know why I am screaming when I hear about all the things that are being taught in school, right? The LBGTQ agenda, you've got uh, critical race theory, all these things. But then you look at the statistics, and in Baltimore, across nine schools, they couldn't find a single child that was able to read, to pass a basic reading exam, or a basic writing exam, or a basic mathematical exam. Why are they doing that? You have right now a crisis in our country where black communities are completely illiterate according to state exams and nobody's talking about it. But these kids will go out and they'll protest and they'll riot and, and they'll do things like that. Why? Because what the government is trying to do is make people emotional and not rational, right? To make them think that they have power when they have absolutely none. They learned this from American history. They learned that you must not allow people to be well read, but make them think that they are, right? Make them emotional, make them go fight. And another element, of course, is that if you were on the slave plantation and you somehow broke free and you understood what was going on and you got the courage to run, well, and they caught you, yeah, <laughs> you, you know what would happen. They would sever your limbs off. They would hang you to teach the other slaves not to get any ideas. And although it would never be anything that harsh today, Google my name. Google Clarence Thomas's name. Google Th Thomas Sowell's name. Google any black American's name, Condoleezza Rice, who has ordained to think for themselves. And let me know what hits you back. The things that we are called, the things that are allowed to be said about us. What is it for? Not to hurt my feelings, to serve as a warning to other black people. Don't even get the idea. <laughs> Don't you even get the idea of thinking conservatively because this is how we will maim you and we will caricature you. And that's exactly what's happened. In fact, in the black community, the greatest people that have ever, uh, the most accomplished black Americans rejected from the community. Clarence Thomas called an Uncle Tom and a coon, a man who actually grew up during Jim Crow. Condoleezza, a woman who grew up during Jim Crow. We hail LeBron James and we reject the people that have accomplished the most in our community. That is by design. Because true success, something that cannot be controlled, an educated mind, right? An educated mind is a free mind, is not something that can ever be deemed aspirational. So I am grateful that I have had the opportunity as someone who sees clearly now, who will never be as great as Thomas Sowell or Clarence Thomas and their accomplishments, but to be able to hit the ground and help people understand what is happening in this country, because if you think that it is the person next to you that you should be hating, you are not yet awake. If you think that it's the person that's on stage that you should be hating, you are not yet awake. America 